What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you how you can basically make a tunnel between an SSH connection and an HTTP connection somewhere on the other side of the world in the browser. So how is it going to work? I'm going to show you right now. So we're going to say SSH localhost minus P222 and uh, I'm going to pipe in, basically not pipe in, I'm going to write my main.go file into this SSH connection. I'm going to press enter. So it basically asks me for my fingerprint. I'm going to say yes. So what's happening is we're going to generate an ID here, a random number, right? And I'm going to use this number to connect somebody else in the world directly, tunnel it, between my SSH and the browser. So I'm going to say localhost, um, localhost 3000, and then I'm going to say ID is going to be this beautiful ID we got. We're going to press enter and you see we got the main.go file directly streamed from my SSH connection to the HTTP connection. That's what we're going to build. That's what I'm going to teach you uh, right now. But before we continue, if you're not subscribed yet to my channel and you appreciate the work that I'm delivering to you, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up. Leave some questions in the comments and of course, jump into my Discord community. All the links are down below. And for the people that really want to level up as a Golang engineer, I have made the full-time GoDev program, which is uh, a program for people that are willing to become professionally active as a Golang engineer. Over 60 hours of videos. Uh, check it out. Uh, let me know what you think about that. And I'm happy to see you as one of my students. Stu stu students. All right. <clears throat> so basically, I already have this project made, but that's no problem because we're going to basically um, uh, delete this thing and we're going to rebuild it, right? So what we're going to do is cd.dot, dot dot. we're going to run rf this SSH tunnel thingy. We're going to make it again. Let me boot this font up here real quick for you guys. So we're going to say SSH HTTP tunnel here, uh, cd, boom, just like that. Uh, yeah, let's do code inside of this project, right? So I'm going to delete this main. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a main, of course, here. Um, yes, perfectly fine. So I think the best thing we're going to do is start with our SSH first, right? So what's going on here? Where is my... Uh, let's take this, it's fine. Yeah, so what we need, there is a cool package which is called Glider Labs SSH and uh, it basically does everything for us, right? So we're going to use that. So we're going to copy this. Uh, but the first, I think I need to do a go mod uh, init here, which is going to be getup.com and the uh, I'm going to call HTTP tunnel. It doesn't really matter. Press enter here. Then I'm going to do a go get of an unformatted string here. That's no problem. We're going to fix that just like this. Press enter. <clears throat> so it's adding that stuff. Then, of course, we're going to copy um, the shenanigans here. And then we're going to paste that in. So uh, what this does is basically it um, handles SSH connections as a server, right? As an SSH server, as easy as HTTP, right? It's very simple. Um, yeah, that's fine. So we're going to listen at port 222, IO white string, that's fine. So what we're going to do first is we need to basically make a tunnel between SSH and HTTP. How we're going to do that is by actually making a type, which is going to be the type tunnel. And that's going to be a structure, right? And what do we need? Well, we need a writer, which is going to be, which is what we need, right? We're going to basically send the writer over to our SSH so we can actually copy stuff into the writer. And in our case, for uh, HTTP, it's going to be the response writer, right? But we're not going to hard code it as a response writer. We're going to just use the interface, IO writer, so you can use it with anything you want. So we're going to say IO writer. The next thing we also need is a DOM, a DOM channel, which is going to be uh, something we need to communicate between SSH and, S and, and, and the browser, well, the, the HTTP connection that we DOM writing uh, what we need to write, right? The tunnel is done. The tunnel is completed. So that's going to be a chance struct here, an empty struct, just like this. Perfectly fine. Um, so what's going to happen is each time somebody connects with SSH, it's going to trigger this function, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a random ID first, and you will see why. So we're going to say a rand. You can generate a string or something else. It doesn't really matter. We're going to use uh, ints for now because it's easy. So we're going to generate a random string, uh, mat.maxint. Should be fine. Uh, yes, we're also going to use a global variable here. So I'm going to say uh, tunnels, which is going to be a map of int. Uh, map to champ tunnel. 
just like that. We're gonna make it like this. Uh, very important, guys, before you pitchfork me, you need to lock this map. If you really want to be pinpoint precise, you need to lock this map. I don't think it's needed because there is a big delay between communication, but lock it anyway. Use a mutex, lock your map. It's concurrently unsafe. You're going to get to jail, right? But we don't have time because your attention span is basically as uh, the same as a mosquito, which is completely nothing, right? So I need to hurry up for the algorithm it's all for the algorithm so basically we have this id here it's perfectly fine so we're gonna say <coughs> tunnels uh id is going to be uh make me a chain of tunnel that's what we're gonna do the next thing we're gonna do is basically we are gonna say that the tunnel itself which is going to come from http uh, and it will all be clear very soon is going to be tunnels uh, ID just like that right so now uh, so what, what's gonna happen is we're gonna make a tunnel and we're gonna wait that's what we're gonna do we're gonna wait until the tunnel is established right <clears throat> because we don't know who's coming right um, what we also need to do is basically print out our link so we can actually see that and copy it into the browser right so we're gonna say a link is going to be this thing or ID actually to be honest Tunnel ID is this thing, uh, which is going to be the ID, perfectly fine. Then we're gonna also write here that the tunnel is ready, just for uh, debugging, tunnel is ready, right? Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna IO copy, right? So what basically is gonna happen is everything you put into your SSH connection, every byte you're basically gonna write into your SSH connection, you're gonna Copy that with a tunnel to your, uh, well, tunnel, quote, quote, right? I'm call it a tunnel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a pipe, it is what it is. Uh, you're going to copy everything from the SSH connection to the browser. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to copy the tunnel dot writer. Uh, what's going on here? Of course, we cannot do that. We need to do this, right? The tunnel dot writer and we are gonna copy the s right and the s is basically our ssh session and um because io copy actually expects a, a writer a destination which is writer and a reader but the cool stuff is that our session is a reader so we are completely fine right uh, of course you could do something like this uh underscore is the bytes written or something like that and then an error and if the error is not nil you can lock uh, fatal or something, whatever. You do your error handling, check the bytes, print it out, whatever you wanna do with that, right? So the next thing we need to do is basically, each time we are done, we need to communicate back to the as a, uh, to the browser that we are actually done uh, copying, right? So we're gonna say, we're gonna do that by just closing the tunnel dot done channel, right? That's what we're gonna do. And if we really want, we could do s write, uh, which is basically right to our SSH connection here. Um, we are done. Something like that. Yes, that seems good. <clears throat> That's basically our SSH handler, right? The next thing we need is uh, handle this in our HTTP handler, right? So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna say go func. And the reason why we need a go func here is because uh, we need to understand that basically this... Uh, SSH listen and serve will block, right? So if we play something below it or or even uh, HTTP listen and serve, it's going to block and our SSH server is not going to get booted up, right? So what we're gonna do is do a go func here. I'm gonna say HTTP handle func, which is going to be slash, and then we're gonna say handle uh, request, which we're gonna doesn't exist yet. We're gonna make that, and then we're gonna say HTTP dot listen and serve. We're gonna listen to uh, the port of all soy devs, which is 3000. And then we going to say nil here because we don't have a handler. Maybe we can do a log fatal here so we know if something is wrong. Maybe something is already listening to 3000 and you have no clue what's going on. And you're gonna spend the whole day debugging this application. Uh, so we're gonna say func handle uh, request, which is going to be w HTTP response response writer or pointer http dot request and we're going to get the id which is going to be our uh, url query get 
you can use any framework you want like you can use uh, fiber uh, gin tonic whatever you, you name it it's fine um get we need to id here right that's fine then we're going to say f uh, underscore okay actually to be honest we can get the pipe here tunnel actually uh is going to be tunnels does it need to be a global variable no you can do whatever you want with it it's just demonstrational purposes i'm using this the same approach in send it uh, and i'm using a global variable sometimes a global variable is per pretty fine doesn't really matter tunnels uh, id right we're gonna check that and actually to be honest we could do that if not okay uh, we can actually do something like uh, I don't know just panic or something or write it to the screen I, I don't even care about it actually to be honest we could do W write byte uh, tunnel not found does not exist not found is better <laughs> tunnel not found uh, return here pretty fine then we got a tunnel wait what's going on here of course this is an ID string yeah so we're gonna say ID we don't care about the error is going to be um, string conversion dot atoy this id str perfectly fine um, yes then we have a tunnel and then we're gonna say that we're gonna say that tunnel which is a channel right it's a channel we're gonna communicate with a channel we're gonna say uh, tunnel it's going to be a new tunnel well not a new tunnel it's just a tunnel object strict whatever you want to call it uh, and we're going to say that the w is going to be our response writer here right and then the dom channel actually we need to make it here we're going to say dom is going to be make a chain of strict uh, empty and then we're going to say dom channel this not, doesn't exist just like that boom save so now we have a new tunnel and we're going to write the tunnel into our channel and then we're gonna just say we're gonna wait dom channel and we're gonna basically uh, block here on the dom channel right because maybe we are copying large files maybe we are doing i don't know maybe we are chatting or i don't i don't know what's going on it doesn't really matter but we need to wait until ssh is done until the we say okay we are done tunneling our data whatever streaming our data it's completely done uh, and then we're gonna close our dom channel and then the HTTP uh, connection will be closed, returned, right? The, the complete response will be done, right? Um, yes, that's that. That's fine. Do we need to do something else? That's the question here. Um, yeah, we close this channel here. We are done probably. Yeah, I think it's fine. We copy. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool, fine. So uh, let's let's test this thing. So I'm going to make a new uh, two two command uh, terminals here the first thing we're gonna do is go run main.go let's see what's going on here uh, no errors that's fine the next thing we're gonna do is uh, first of all I need to delete this where is this thing it doesn't matter it doesn't matter let's let's just do it uh, ssh localhost minus p which basically means connect me on port 2222 because 22 is your uh, is already yeah, it's 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 your default host, right? It's it's your default SSH shenanigans going on on your PC. Okay, and then we can use this thing in here, which is basically um, you're gonna write, you're gonna copy whatever you're gonna call it, you're gonna write that into uh, SSH. Oh, basically, it's Unix. You can write it to a file or whatever, right? But in this case, it's going to be an SSH connection. Right? And for simplicity, we're gonna use main.go and we're gonna press enter. Of course, you can see warning remote host identification has changed. That's because each time you're going to boot up your SSH server, you are going to create under the hood, it's going to create new keys um, and a new host keys, which basically means uh, it's a new host key you didn't add. So, um, well, you already added it, but it's a different key. So it's going to complain. How can you fix that? Well, if you go, <clears throat> we're not going to do it right now, but I can tell you basically uh, there are some configuration you can set that in the SSH server from the package we just installed where you can basically uh, give your own key. So each time you reboot, it's going to use the same key. So you will not have that error over and over again. But hey, for simplicity, what we can do is just uh, copy this thing blindly, copy, paste, enter, press. And then we do again the same thing here, which is SSH localhost, press enter. And then a fingerprint, yes. So now 
<clears throat> you can see we are blocking, right? So our SSH is blocking, it's waiting for the other side, right? So how do we do that? Uh, hopefully we have a tunnel ID here, which we created. We're gonna copy this tunnel ID. And uh, let's do just Google here. So we can see, just Google find. Then we're gonna say local host. Not quite sure why this 555 is always coming up first. It's so annoying here. Uh, Localhost, this one. We're gonna say ID. Yeah, it's fine. ID, then we're gonna paste that in and then we're gonna press enter here. And you can see it piped, it tunneled uh, exactly what we want, right? So we can also do something else here, right? We could do, um, tunnel is ready. Actually, did we write completed? No, but it's fine. Um, Wait, this is, okay, this, uh, uh, we are done here. You see, we are done. That's basically uh, what happened, right? So you can do a lot of cool stuff, right? You could do something like this. Um, can we do this? Echo, hello world. Not quite sure if this is gonna work. Press enter. Uh, no, it's not gonna work. That's, that's sad. Why is it not working? Anyway, so so it doesn't matter. You can pipe anything you want in it. Um, in this case, uh, may not go actually, to be honest. So you can see it's uh, it created a new uh, ID here and it's going to basically just return the same fucking file, right? Press enter and you can see it's the same file. But uh, you can do anything. You can transfer files. You can um, zip. You, you can do a lot of stuff. It's exactly the same thing that how send it works. Well, this is basically it, guys. I hope... Um, you had something about it. I think it's a very cool trick. Uh, the possibilities are basically endless. Um, it, it uses Go channels and all that stuff. It uses IO copy, uh, some, some cool stuff uh, for you to learn from. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and uh, leave some questions in the comments. Jump into the Discord community. And like I said, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you're interested in becoming a full-time GoDev, check out fulltimegodev.com and learn from my 10 years of Golang experience, right? Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.